Write that down for those that are listening. Look for opportunities, but always bring your passion with you because in the marketplace, it's constantly changing. And if there's anything that any of us should get really, really good at is communication, okay, the art of communicating effectively. If I can get somebody that that doesn't know me to to understand uh, you know who I am and to to quickly gain rapport to get them to know you to like you to ultimately trust you they'll buy anything from you right so so that that was what my commitment was it's like okay I just need to understand how to communicate effectively and how do I Dude. acquire a new client Alrighty, welcome everybody to the Million Dollar Secrets podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, welcome. If you're listening from your phone or your computer, welcome as well. I'm so excited because today we're going to be talking about how to sell one to many. We have a very special friend of mine. He's actually somewhat like a mentor at, at sometimes because I've been watching him from a distance. And today we have Riley Meek in the building, and Riley's going to be talking about how you guys can use seminars. You sell one to many. Now, many of you listening right now are online entrepreneurs. You're online entrepreneurs and you're maybe selling via webinars, you're selling via challenges. Who knows? You may have just ads running and booking calls in your business. But today I want to talk about with Riley, how do you actually actually run in-person events that convert? And so to give you a little rundown about Riley, this dude, he is legit. He's built multiple seven and eight figure businesses, I think in total, which I'll let him clarify in just a minute. But this dude has made a total of, I think, nine figures. If you really think about what nine figures is in sales, that is astronomical. That's amazing. So I brought Riley in to talk today about how to sell one to many. Riley, how's it going, my friend? Great, Michael. Pumped to be here, brother. This is going to be fun. Dude, I'm so stoked about this because this is something I've been reading up on a little bit in the background. I, th I see you had some articles online and I was like, this is intriguing because I know what you do um, on the out, you know, just kind of outside of this podcast. I've learned a little bit about what you got going on. But I'm like, let's dive into this deeper. So I just want to go straight into the content today. I don't want to add in any fluff. So tell us real quick, though, a little bit about who you are and how in the world did you start these seminar gigs, like what made you say, I want to get into running seminars to sell my products? Yeah, brother. Well, first off, for those listening here, I want you guys to, to really listen up because uh, what I'm about to share, like completely changed my life. Uh, it, when I was, uh, you know, I'm, I'm only 37 right now, but for the last 13 years, I have been uh, starting and scaling companies. I've taken eight of them now from, from literally zero. So startup, I've bootstrapped everything that I've done. Uh, from from zero to actually when I started six hundred and seventy three bucks in my bank account like total wow. that's I was just coming off a failed business venture and uh, I was introduced to this concept of selling one to many and from that point on man I was uh, you know twenty four at at the time and I had done a lot of sales I've done a, had done a lot of different like random sales gigs from. Uh, well, I had a anytime fitness franchise that I had bought and owned mainly because I made a decent amount of money just selling as an independent contractor, selling one on one. Uh, but I'd sold everything from siding and windows to bathroom remodeling uh, to business valuation. So there wasn't really any like industry that I was in, but I was in sales. Like I knew I I, I enjoyed the process of getting somebody to you know, hi, my name is Riley, to ultimately making that buying decision. And I was able to make a decent amount of money, never more than, you know, low six figures a year doing it. But when you're 22, 23, 24, like, hey, I'm, and I, was, I was living a, a decent life. But that afforded me to ultimately continue to look for what's next, what's next, what's next. And after, you know, a failed business venture in Mexico, when I was 24, I found myself living, uh, you know, back here in Minnesota, which is where we, we still reside now. Uh, but I, we were literally sleeping on my sister's couch. I, I had leased up my my condo. I'd put everything into this uh, new venture that I was I was doing, which ultimately failed, and we were essentially kicked out of the country of Mexico. Uh, but I, wow. I was literally sleeping on my sister's couch, and and I was like seeking, like, okay, what's next? Like, what is next? Because I'm a firm believer. There's no really such thing as as failure. There's only feedback. If if that's okay. our mindset, right? Like if 
you know, we we've all probably heard this. Thomas Edison didn't didn't fail at you know a thousand times at at making the light bulb. He actually learned a thousand ways it didn't work, right? And that's just a simple mindset that he actually had. And so that was my perspective. I'd I'd committed my life to to personal development and like, okay, I just want to continue to get better and better and better. And when I was introduced to this concept of selling one to many, that moment in time was when my life radically, radically, man, changed. Because what 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 I was introduced to was just the power of leverage. And I know, you know, some of our listeners here might be doing a lot of this online, which is great from a webinar standpoint. Even, you know, we do podcasts, everything like that. It's great. We're we're talking, we're we're allowing, you know, one person to deliver a message to many. But when you take somebody on a a specific journey uh, with with one goal in mind, and that is to acquire a sale. There's something special that can be done, and that's really what what I'd committed my life to at the age of 24. Once I understood this concept, and ultimately, as we've now started, as as I said, eight of those companies from zero to seven. A couple of them we actually hit eight figures within the very first year of each, and that's what's afforded us the nine figure lifestyle that we have now. Love it, man. So tell me, tell me a little bit about what is for people that are newer and they're just starting their business. What is a seminar to you? Like what, how did you even find it? Cause you said you stumbled upon one to many. So the first yeah. question I have is how in the world did like, did somebody introduce this to you? Did you buy a coaching program? Like yeah. how, what did that look like? And then kind of go in depth. What, what your seminar style is? What is a seminar? Yeah, brother. So, well, this actually came off of time and this is what I think is so important for entrepreneurs. Uh, I was constantly seeking. And as entrepreneurs, I think we need we commit to this lifestyle of what I believe is just like head on a swivel and always be looking for opportunities. Some people will tell you that, you know, if you if you just follow your passion, you'll never work a day in your life. Bro, I think that is like the worst advice on the face <laughs> of the earth. Um, which well, maybe why do you say that? Why do you say that? People. Because I know a lot of people that are passionate about things that will make zero money. Right, my, my one of my best friends. His name's Scott Thomas. He's he's my business partner in a lot of these ventures. His wife is extremely passionate at rocking babies. Okay, uh, uh, unless you know, it, it really, probably that's why Scott has to go do what he does so she can afford right. to rock babies. Right. So, as an entrepreneur, I've made this commitment that I'm always looking for opportunities, and no matter what the opportunity is, I'm always going to bring my passion with me. Right. So, uh, write that down for those that are listening. Look for opportunities, but always bring your passion with you because in the marketplace, it's, it's constantly changing. And if there's anything that in a, any of us should get really, really good at is communication, okay, the art of communicating effectively. If I can get somebody that, that doesn't know me to, to understand uh, you know, who I am and to, to quickly gain rapport, to get them to know you, to like you, to ultimately trust you, they'll buy anything from you. Right. So, so that, that was what my commitment was. It's like, okay, I just need to understand how to communicate effectively and how do I Dude, acquire a new client? It's, right? it's crazy That's that it. you're saying this because this is kind of like the journey I'm at right now. Like I heard it, someone say this a while back and I can't remember exactly who said it, but they said, there's two things you need in life to be successful. And it, it kind of translates to anything is communication and sales, right? If you can get good at communication and sales and selling is more than just selling on a seminar, selling on a podcast, selling on a webinar, you sell your kids every day to get dressed. You sell your wife every day to want to go to your favorite restaurant. So they said, get good at communication and selling and you'll be set for life. There was maybe one other thing I can't remember, but it's funny that you're saying this. So you got really good at communication is what you're saying. Yes, yes absolutely, man. Because if if you can, it doesn't matter if you're in IT. It doesn't matter if you're uh, you're like I don't I don't even like people because believe me, I I don't enjoy being around people all the time, right? But I I can I can be because I've learned how to uh, how to affect or have an effect uh, or what we call why we call our company the social dynamic selling system is that there is a social dynamic that's taking place in, taking place in every setting. Right, right now, just you and I talking. While it's virtual, right now, we're, there's still a social dynamic here. Right, if you think about, uh, you know, when you go to church, there's a social dynamic. There's, there's the, the maybe the pastor, there's the greeters, the ushers, the other members of the congregation. If you go to a bar, there's the the bartender, the hostess, the other people. There's a dynamic taking place. 
And if you can learn how to use all of those components to work in your favor, now you can actually, uh, I don't want to say control a situation because there's always variables that, that take place, but it's, it's up to us on, on how to control what we can control and, and ultimately take people on an emotional journey to create a situation in which they want to take action, right? So my, my job as, as a, what I consider us is like, we are client acquisition experts. That's it. Right. Right. So I don't care what the product is, uh, as you mentioned, you know, selling, I'm selling my wife every day on why she shouldn't leave me. Right. And if we have this mentality, like, bro, this is like the, I mean, I went through a divorce when I was 20, man, 25 ish. And so as kind of this peak, as I was excelling, you know, financially, which is a whole nother topic. Right. But, um, I, I was committed to some of the wrong things in my life and I went through a divorce. And one of the things though, that, uh, one of my mentors at the time, I sat down and I had lunch with him and he was like, bro, if you, if, if I was to look at my marriage, the way that I looked at business, uh, in like, I, I'm always like looking at, at how to affect a situation. And ch- I simply changed my mindset that, Hey, I'm not here to, you know, I didn't, I checked the box when she said I do at the altar. Right. And I was like, okay, mission accomplished. Now what? Right. Now my, my mindset was able to shift to like, okay, uh, now I need to keep her. Right. And so this is for some people in a business, like there's, there's always new client acquisition, but then also there's client retention. And so uh, dependent upon what phase of your business that you're in, that's what you, your focus should be. But at the end of it, everything comes back to how are you communicating with them to ultimately take an action that you're looking to them to take or, or not take an action as well. And that's just understanding what your product is or your services and ultimately how we can best serve our, our customer. And, and that's really what, what, as I mentioned, I just really committed myself to and determining, okay, if I'm going to sell one to many and back to bro, just like the leverage of this, that's really, it was like inventing fire in front of me, bro. Like I, I did, I, everything I had done was, was one-on-one and I could, you know, it could be an hour, two hours, three hours, sometimes four hours trying to get somebody to buy whatever it was I was selling. Like, and it, it was emotionally draining for anybody that's, that's in sales like that. It is and as much as I loved the idea that you could earn what you're worth. That's what they always kind of told me. Um, I never truly bought into it because I only, I knew that there was only a certain amount of time in a day that would afford me the ability to, to sell X amount of products. Right. It, and so when this concept of now one to many, that's what rocked me. And I was like, Holy cats, if, if I could deliver a presentation to a group of people and take them on that emotional journey, ultimately to create a situation but that, that I really was convicted enough was the best situation for them. Now, you're never going to sell everybody. Anybody tells you that, they're flat out lying and they're probably very manipulative in their ways. Uh, but you, you're just looking to create a situation in which they can make the best decision for themselves. Because at the end of the day, people do not make decisions. We're procrastinators. And we're afraid of making the wrong decision. So your job as a as an entrepreneur is to get to create an environment in which people just want to make a wise decision, right? You you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. But I could put salt in its oats, and for whatever reason, that horse just wants to drink. And that's ultimately the power of what a seminar does uh, is is allows you to to. Uh, drop little nuggets of wisdom for people to receive what you're saying and for them to digest and process this because I could deliver fact over fact over fact and tell them why my product is the best. But the only thing that's going to be a lasting transformational sale for them is when they receive the information, digest it, and then they come up with the wise decision that your product or your service is the best for you. Man. That whole three to five minutes there, I hope people go back and rewind because that was so powerful. And I want to touch on a few things there. One, you talked about customer retention, which is something that people don't talk about a lot. You hear on ads, hey, I got the best new way to acquire customers. Hey, run these ads, run this funnel, right? There's so many different ways to acquire customers, but how do you keep them once you have them? That's very powerful. And there's you think back to some of the biggest companies and even you know a lot of smaller companies should do this is figure out ways you can uh, retain customers and track it right if you aren't tracking this in your business it's something that you can maybe add um, create some kpis key performance indicators right around how to retain and what it takes to retain your clients so i just love that i just want to point that out 
that's something that a lot of people don't focus on, but maybe should, especially if you're a coach. If you're listening to this right now and you're in the coaching industry and you are um, trying to help guide people to a better future and guide them to a new level, um, you know, a lot of times there's a lot of a high churn rate in the coaching industry. Um, so you want to try to find ways to re- keep those people inside your ecosystem as long as possible. So thanks, man, for all the gems. Want to dive into uh, a little bit more. So these you gave a good breakdown about what these seminars do right and so what does it look like for riley meek whenever you go in and you don't have to give all the secret sauce but let's give some people a little um i guess you would say a little perspective on what this can be used for like so give us a little rundown about who should be running these seminars that you're talking about can this be done for anybody great question brother this is probably the most common question because when i first talk about this everybody's like well i want to do that and let me just preface this with if If you're selling a $48 real estate course and there's no additional lifetime value to your customer, right? Lifetime value meaning, okay, I I could acquire 48 bucks and now I can get them to purchase again or again or again. Maybe it's a recurring product or there's upsells involved. Uh, If you don't have that in place, that's where we would need to start, right? Because this does take money. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, dance around this. This takes money to fill an event because what, what my goal is to do is I want to fill an event with, with the highest quality prospect that I can possibly find. And so I, we need to understand what your customer, who your customer is, right? What is your product or your service? What are, what are you really selling, right? We get, we get to, down into the, the true nuts and bolts of what truly are you selling? And for example, one of our companies, we have a uh, well, we have multiple companies, but we have a walk-in bathtub company. We'll just use that for example. If you guys don't know what a walk-in bathtub is, it's you know one of these large tubs in your bathroom. We would remove your existing bathtub and put this in, but it has a door and a seat in there so you can sit on it, right? So I know who my client is. It's somebody that's aging, right? That that maybe doesn't want to leave their home because they've lived there as long as possible. They don't want to have to go to a nursing home. So I just started to create a, a, like, who is this person and how do they think? Why do they think this way? And then that helps me to craft a message. Um, number one, we do a ton of direct mail, a ton, right? We, my, my business partner, Scott, he's, so you're he's saying direct mail one. isn't dead, <laughs> <laughs> bro. I, I, I love it when people say that and think that even because it's less clutter in the mailbox for me, baby. So, so I, direct mail's dead. How about that? No, I'm just kidding. It, it is alive <laughs> and well. Um, it is it is one of the the best forms of ROA. Not one of. I would, I will, I can boldly say it is the number one return on result product that I've ever used from a marketing standpoint. Way better than Facebook ads. Way better than any sort of SEO or anything like that. Because you got to even think about, bro, like the type of person that responds to direct mail. Because remember, we're starting with the end in mind. I want to get somebody to take action on something, right? So I I need somebody that's going to make a decision. And people that are scrolling Facebook and looking up on ads and, and, you know, the, the attention span is about three seconds to these people, right? And the moment they register for something, they forgot about it just as quickly, Right. So if I send a direct mail piece, number one, people are checking their mail over their garbage can. Reality of it. If you think about the last time you, you checked your mail, right? Like you're standing over, it's like junk mail, junk mail, junk mail, junk mail, uh, bill, right? And, and then so I've got to get their attention like that. And so that person right then and there makes decisions. They're like, oh, I, I will take this. I'll maybe I'll throw it on the fridge or I'm gonna look, re-look at this. I'll read it in a second. So they've made a decision to either go online and register or what 95% of them actually do is they pick up the phone and they call our 800 number and register. They get an RSVP right on the spot. And and then our portal essentially shows in real time as all of our leads and and prospects are coming in. And so because of that, this will rock your world, dude, because I know know the world of, of, of challenges and webinars and things that you're in. I have over a 90% show up rate for my seminars, right? So the, if when the moment somebody calls in and registers, we've put things in place that I get over 90% of them, not to just click on a, a link to watch an event, no, to physically get in their car, to drive to the nearest restaurant that we're hosting this event and to sit in it for a couple hours uh, and listen to what I got to say. And th- there's Very such good. power in that, man, when I can get that type of person to make a decision 
the first decision, right, to pick up the phone, the second decision to come to the event, the third decision to to actually schedule an appointment for me, the fourth decision to meet with me that very next day to keep that appointment, the fifth decision to actually make the purchase, right? And then ultimately, you know, I don't even like saying this word, but to, to cancel, I knock on some wood when I say that, but to, to actually keep that product or that service. And so we measure everything, as you mentioned, bro, those KPIs, every step of our process, I know, and this is how I, we were able to scale. Because when it was just me, dude, it, I went from zero, remember 673 bucks in my bank account to this would have been July of 2011. I started my very first seminar event. I made a couple of sales. And the thing that I did is I kept reinvesting. I didn't just take that 10 grand that I, that I had made about 10 grand profit from that. Uh, I, I reinvested into the next event, into the next event, into the next event. And my, my commitment was head down. I'm just going to, I'm not going to go, you know, but we're literally still sleeping on my sister's couch at this time, but I was committed. Money was coming in, but I wasn't focused on, oh, I need to go rent a different place. I need to go get a new car. No, no, no. We made a commitment. And, and I stuck to that. And I looked up six months later at the end of 2011, bro, I had done $2.1 million after starting with 673 bucks in my bank account. And, and that's the power of, of making a commitment and deciding like, there is no other option here. I'm the boats have been burnt and I'm, I'm forward facing and I'm not going to waver in my thoughts of, of how this works because I, I had proven that it worked. That was my goal. It's like, can I prove this? And then from there, 2012, it was like, okay, this works. Now can I teach others how to do it? And that's was my sole focus over 2012 and 13. And by the end of, of 2012, I had 26 crews across 34 states. We'd done 12 million that year because we put systems in place that would allow me to sit here in my living room like I am right now and measure everything from afar, not having to be the one. So I, I was able to, to step out of the day-to-day and work on my business versus in my business every day. And that's what what allowed me to scale and ultimately then start the next company, the next company, the next mm-hmm. company, and so on. That That's an amazing story, first of all. But then second, so you're saying people who maybe have a higher LTV, right, in their business, they can be using this. So you're, I just want to go back and rewind. So you're saying somebody that's selling maybe a $90 product, a $100 product, and that's all they have. Probably not for them. But somebody who's yeah. selling maybe something higher and they have more products in the queue, maybe somebody, I use coaches a lot because that's in the space I'm in, but somebody who maybe has a $5,000 coaching program or a 10000 or maybe even just a $1,000, $3,000 product doesn't have to be a coaching program. You think that's, that's a good fit for them if it's more of a, a higher yes. ticket t- item? Absolutely. Absolutely. Higher ticket items. So if you, if you just, I'll just list off some of the products or services that are my companies, right? So I started off first off as I was selling home insulation, right? So, which by the way, I still to this day, don't even know what the R stands for and R value. So please don't tell me it'll ruin my story, but I've done north of $40 million selling insulation to homeowners. Uh, and, and, you know, packed in, I, I bundled it with some uh, LED lights. Some, um, uh, we did uh, a solar attic ventilators. So I bundled products together. So if you think about what your product is right now, what else would serve your client or your, your end user? Because if, if that value isn't there, if it's like, well, I only sell $1,000, it's probably it's the, the return on investment is probably not going to be there. But can we bundle your product or maybe somebody else's product or services to come together here where now I've got a five or ten or fifteen thousand dollar product that I could sell, and it doesn't have to be all up front. We have our financing for all of our companies, uh, but uh, so we we talked about insulation. I, I did the walk in bathtubs. I have a solar company, right? I've got uh, an insurance agency. Which, by the way, you know, financial advisors. Even if you think about this, you've probably seen uh, if you've gone to a restaurant or seen some of these events going on. Advisors have. I, I did not invent this this program. What I did do is perfect it though, because advisors have been doing this for years and, and they, they have a, you know, a great offering typically, but usually they're a one trick pony and they're just selling an annuity, right? Like that's, that's what their end right. goal is. Uh, and so um, we, we do that same thing. We have an insurance agency in which we sell financial products and services. Uh, but we've also sold to like investment groups, like syndicates that are looking to raise funds uh, so we we target accredited investors that that have uh, 
you know, north of 400 grand in, in IP income producing assets. So this is the data that we can buy from our, our list of who I'm going to mail out to in a, in a geographic area. area. I, I know demographically who I want to mail to, to ultimately get them to, to respond to our event uh, right. and then certainly come on out. Now, here, here's the thing too. We're offering a steak dinner, right? It's a free steak dinner. And uh, one thing, bro, that I love when, when, people, <laughs> when people start with us, there's a, there's a level of trust that they just have to, if, if it's never been done before in their industry, we have to kind of take them through this process. And, and there's a level of trust because this isn't something, what, what I hate about coaches, bro, or people that, are, that just tell you what you should be doing, but have never done it themselves. That's like my biggest pet peeve on the planet. Like I would never hire a fat fitness trainer, right? Why would you do that? You're an idiot if you do that, right? If you if you hire a financial advisor that doesn't that has less money than you, I think you're an idiot for doing that. Like why would you trust somebody that hasn't gone before you? And this is what I think the problem is in, in just the coaching industry. It's like everybody wants to be a coach, yet they've never done anything for themselves. Like go out there, put the work in, go do something of value, then others will will follow. Right. But so many people want to want to talk about it and, and give you their opinion about it. Yet they have zero fruit in their own life. And and that was my commitment. Like, bro, I don't even. Yes, I have a coaching company. But to be honest, I don't love coaching. I, I, I love producing. Uh, but right. it it's it's only because I've, I've committed my, my life to that. And I want to continually be productive in everything that I do. But I do know that. I can be more productive by teaching people these concepts and philosophies uh, that that have been proven. Not that that are, well, I think this is going to work, right? I'm never going to give advice that I haven't done before, or at least know somebody that's proven this model before. And so, it, and, and that's really why uh, coming back to the lifetime value and the high ticket item is what's going to be your bread and butter for this thing, right? So uh, we talked about Home remodeling products and services usually crush direct to consumer um, uh, people that are looking to make investments. Uh, and again, this comes back to I can target the exact type of demographic of who I want in that room. So I can confidently know like tomorrow morning I'm catching a flight into Texas and I have uh, 30 people, 39 people on for two seminars tomorrow and then I have another 40 people on Wednesday that are are showing up that are my target audience. Now, are all of them ready with their checkbook open to buy what I have? Of course not, right? If that if it was like that, a monkey could freaking do this, right? But instead, then now I know what I have to do and I had to get really good then at, at back to that gaining that no like and trust and getting people to right. make a decision. But if your marketing's dialed in on the front end, the sales side is an easier process, right? It's never going to be completely simple, but I can make this easier by starting with the end in mind and knowing who I need in my audience ultimately to get them to, again, make that that ultimate buying decision. Love it, dude. So a re- little quick recap for everybody that's listening here. You send out direct mail. This is what he does. Sends out direct mail, gets them to a room, a local room. Have you ever done this to where you invite people to maybe where it's, they have to travel out of state or they travel to a, a different location, like a regional location, or is it just all local? All local, all local. What I would do now, I've done micro mini events uh, where like they're like pre events where I can then at that event, sell them into a larger regional event. Right. So we've, we've done that. The most recent, like in Florida, we were going up and down the, the Western coast of Florida, like St. Pete, uh, into Tampa, and then circled back around over to Orlando to, to host one, one large event three months out. So I was selling like a pre pre sale event to come to for free. And then I sold the ticket to come to the regional event after that. But otherwise target, target it locally. Versus if they have to make plans and, and travel and things like that, it's just another hurdle. And there's plenty of people locally that will buy your product or service. Right. Yeah, I love this. And I think this is really cool. And this is going to be this. This conversation may apply to some of you guys listening may not. But I think you'll be able to take some certain gems out of this that will really help you grow in your business, regardless if you're going to do these in seminars or not. So let's talk about that no like and trust piece how do you go about building that during these seminars because i'm imagining you're they're sitting down eating a steak dinner with you right you're sitting down 
they some of these people they may know you from the letter you sent maybe you sent them some other things in the mail or maybe via email or phone number but how do you get people to trust you in like two hours I, I'm, I'm imagining it's just like two or three hours so how do you get them to trust you in that amount of time and what are some tips for people in here that are like you know what i want to get better at selling from stage which that's not a stage but it technically is right i want to get better at this building that know like and trust in front of people i've never spoke to before what would you give them tips so one how do you what's your process what would you give uh, and then also what would you give for people that want to get better in that area yeah yeah so first thing knowing that your first touch with them starts at, starts at the the mailbox again right like you, your messaging the continuity should be there from from their first time of like i got the mail piece to the to the experience that they had on the phone call rebooking the event to the confirmation call to them showing up and this is where now you are you are on stage as as you mentioned right you're so it's important to get there in advance, uh, get get the serving team on the same page, the, the hostess on the same page. So people are having a great experience, right? Again, control the controllables in, in any given situation. And so uh, the moment that I, I say, you know, hi, my name's Riley, you're, you're here for the seminar. Now I'm on stage, right? Like, and, and everybody's watching me, whether I have one person or 30 people that are that are showing for these events. And I think the biggest thing for this is, is really people like people. So we want them to get them to know us, like us and trust us, but people like people that are like them. Right. And, and if I can relate to them in, in any manner, I'm going to find that, that common ground. And I can do that individually when I'm, when I'm greeting them. And so, so you know, some people that do these type of events will have, they, they want to be like this prestige person that's you know getting announced and coming up and I don't do that right I like I it's me I'm running these events solo because I want them to know that I'm I'm like them they can trust me I'm not somebody that's that's above them in any manner uh and and I'm going to be you know the their go-to contact for whatever this product or service is and so uh so that that's what I do is 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 when I'm I'm greeting them I'm spending time with them and the biggest thing then from the presentation is know your content, right? With competence comes confidence. So if you don't know what your content is, it's hard to come across confident. And so th that's the, the biggest thing. Now, that being said, because I've done this long enough, you could give me a product or a service, give me five minutes, and I, I, will, I will be able to have a, a presentation in my head because I know now the journey that I need to take people on. Right, the product or the service is irrelevant for the most part. Most products out there are commodities. Even you know your coaching company, like it's they can get it from anywhere. But why would they get it from you, right? And so that's what they're buying is you. That know that like that trust is you. And so during the presentation, I I'm not too polished. I, I want to. I, I actually purposely put times in there where I stumble or fumble. Or I, I even I don't have my my laptop. I'm changing over my PowerPoint presentation, but right blatantly there is a family picture, right where I want them to see that I'm married, I have a child, uh, that 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 I'm I am actually like them in that process. And right. so it's it's building the presentation is once you have that framework. Now it's simple to actually get them to or to, to implement a product or service in that. And again, that's partly what we consult on and we teach people this process, what, no matter what your product or service is, there's a framework here that can be used to ultimately get them to like you and to trust you. And again, back to that commitment of, I don't care what the product or the service is. If I can commit to getting people to, to, uh, or if I can personally commit to, to learning the, the how to communicate effectively that then will allow me to do to excel in any business that I'm actually in, right? Even if you are back into like IT, it's like at the end of the day, you are still in business for yourself because even if you're getting an hourly rate for your job, you had to sell them at some point. And, and they need to know, even if it's like, okay, you get paid 30 bucks an hour, that's the value that they put on you. You then need to excel that 30 bucks an hour. Otherwise, they will replace you. Right. And if, if we all took on this mindset, that's that's when we could continually grow through this process. And so, um, I, I mean, kind of a, a long, drawn out answer to your question, Michael, but 
it's ultimately from from the point that they get the the invitation, the continuity that's needed from hi, this is who we are to getting the appointment, right? Because this is a, we're not I'm not selling anything at the event. I do want to be crystal clear with that. What's why this system works so well is I'm gaining that no like and trust, and all I'm doing is asking for them to trust me enough to meet with them one on one the next day. Right. There's sense of urgency still, but it is the next day in which I can actually present price or or the proposal to them, again, based upon the, the product or service that we have. And then I can sell one on one. But the presentation does 95 percent of all the work for me. I'm overcoming every single objection that they have. And then when I meet with them one on one, now it's now we can get down to the nuts and bolts of this thing of like and there's really only two objections at this point. They don't they don't trust me or they can't afford it. Right. And, and there's two things that, that you will never overcome, which I've just had to, I've had to just accept this two things that you will never overcome in any sales situation is stupidity and poverty. Right. Some people, you just, you're just never going to get through to them and just accept it. Right. And then poverty, there's things that, Hey, if, if they just literally physically can't afford it, there's no way to make that happen or to get them financed for it. You did your job. Right. And you got to be comfortable with that and okay with that and just know like, okay, I did my job. Now I'm moving on to the next one. And and just know that there's always a consistent flow of leads and, and new sales coming into your business. And that was that was the biggest thing with generating this system, bro, is that it is a system, right? Because a lot of people have a great product, they have a great service, but so many people don't have a continual flow of leads and sales into their business. And no matter what that movie tells us, if you build it. They do not come. I promise you that. They do not come. You have to have a consistent flow of leads and sales coming into your business. And at that point, then you can grow. You can afford now to scale and ultimately take this thing or your business to the moon. Dude, I hope you guys are finding value in this video today in this podcast. This is we've I've had Riley on for several other events and he just over delivers every time. So, dude, thank you so much for the information so far. And it sounds like it's not something that somebody can perfect overnight, right? Just like right. anything, there's. I'm sure. I'm sure your first seminar was a train wreck, or maybe it was, you know, perfect. I'm not sure, but maybe I'm sure it was a lot less polished than it is right now. So that should be. Yeah. Am I right about that? Or a hundred percent, bro. And it was, but that was just again back to the commitment. Like I was going to continually get better and better and better and better, and I'm still getting better and better and better. I still don't have this figured out, right? I, but I do know that. I am a little bit better than I was yesterday. And that is my commitment to everything that I do in, in my life. And if we take on that mentality and just trust that process, again, trust the process that somebody's gone before you and done it. If it's if it's been done, it can be done again. And and that ultimately is just part of my commitment through this. And, and when I did my first seminar, bro, it was a train wreck. It was like, okay, but hey, at the end of the day, people liked me enough. They felt that I was I was trusting enough to ultimately put insulation in their attic, uh, right, and, and give them some LED light bulbs. And then it was like learning from that. And the biggest thing, it, this is the biggest thing, and this is what I still do to to this day. Whenever I take on a new product or a new new client, in this is we we build a presentation, right? If it's brand new, partly we're, we're still kind of still testing, right? We're testing everything. But if I'm first delivering this, okay, I have a new product or a new service, I'm testing this. Everything that I do as I'm paying attention and I'm writing every objection down that I possibly can. I would leave the home or leave the appointment and I would write down exactly what they said and why, what was the objection. And then what I did is I took that back to my PowerPoint presentation and that I, it, I implemented that now into my presentation, right? The point of a webinar, the point of anything is to overcome every objection that we possibly can. So by the time they have a decision, this decision to make, the only dis wise decision is yes, either that or they're stupid or they're broke, right? Back to the stupidity and poverty thing that you're never going to be able to overcome. But, but your job is to get, overcome every other objection. And if you commit to that, you're going to be successful. You can't not be successful if your product and service, of course, is, is is really dialed in and you're you're selling something of value. I love it, man. This is like confirmation because that's exactly what we teach in a lot of our um, our coaching and our events that we do. For people that don't know who I am, you're watching for maybe from Riley's audience. We do a lot of events with people and it's, most of it's virtual, but we teach people 
how to take people through a transformational experience, right? Life is all about experiences. And if you can figure out ways to lead people through transformational experiences, it's going to change not only their life, but it could change your life as well. And so that's, you're talking about oh, the objections and um, getting to those objections before the sale even comes. That's what we teach as well. And so if you're here right now, this is something to really think about, something to plan out before the sale comes is ask yourself, what are those objections? What are those self-limiting beliefs? Now, don't tell them, oh, you have this self-limiting belief because nobody uses that term in every, everyday right. life. Now, as entrepreneurs, we know what that means, right? But what uh, what self-limiting beliefs do they have about themselves, about their business, maybe about their home, right? It depends on what you're selling. But yeah, we I love that. I just wanted to say that key right there about addressing the objections before the sale is made is amazing. And if you guys are taking on your, the sales role in your business, figure out ways to really dive in and ask yourself, like he said, like Riley mentioned, what are the objections in your industry? Now, most of the objections that you are in the world are going to be the same, right, Riley? I mean, but there are some specific for your niche and what you're selling. So get good at identifying those and helping people make the best decision as possible. Going back to what Riley said at the beginning, this isn't just about all the money. It's about helping people make a decision that's best for themselves, a decision that they may not know they need right now, but we know they need it because it's going to change their life forever. Riley, right. my friend, dude, anything else you want to say? There's a lot of online entrepreneurs here. So there's a lot of people here who, you know, they're they're just starting an online business and you're in the online space as well. So just so you guys are aware, Riley does these in-person seminars, but he does tons of stuff online as well. What piece of advice would you give for people who are listening right now that just want to take their business to the next level? What would be just one word of wisdom you would give these people as we close this out? Yeah, I would uh, certainly, if you're committed to this process, then you've got to surround yourself and, and you may be a solopreneur right now, right? Like and when you are just starting out, maybe you're limited on, on funds. Uh, so you, you have time and you have money, right? And so if, if you're, if you're looking at this of like, well, I got to do everything in this process right now, that's fine. Do it. I mean, and enjoy this time because when I first started, remember I was broke, right? Beyond broke. So I, I had to be the one that designed my mail piece. I had to be the one that that found the mail company that took the literal calls that then, you know, drove that booked the venue that I did everything in that. But one of the things, remember, I, I just kept reinvesting in my business. And the moment that I could afford to hire an expert to take that role over, I, I did it because I knew that that was going to free me up to get really good at my craft. What was I good at? And, and ultimately, you know, what, what that is for you as the entrepreneur. And what I would encourage you is that, if you are an entrepreneur and you're you're like I'm building this thing, your number one focus needs to be client acquisition. No, I mean don't worry about the systems and everything like that in place. Those will come, okay? But there's a process and an order to getting those in place. You want to do your best to have everything dialed in, but go sell something first. Okay? Number one, does anybody even care what the heck you have to say or, or offer? If you can sell one person, you've proven now it can be done again. So if I can go get one one new client first, now I can actually build this thing out to actually get more and more. And as I'm building that, I'm hiring and surrounding myself with experts in the field. That's why I had Michael and his team actually take over our our uh, last online event that we hosted. It was I, I hated that crap and I wasn't very good at it, but we fumbled our way through it. But ultimately, the moment that I could find somebody to partner with and like, okay, let's take this thing, let's grow this thing. I hired an expert in the field and that's why I, you know, I, I hired you, your team, Michael, you guys crushed it, did an amazing job for us and why we will, we will continue to do that. And uh, so the, the takeaway from that is don't be afraid to hire somebody uh, and spend a little bit of money, even, even change your mindset from that, invest a little bit of money to ultimately grow this thing. Now, if your goal is just to, uh, I'm, I'm happy making a million bucks, whatever, doing that solo, fine, then do that all, all day long. But if you want to take this to the next level, which I believe that's why you're even listening to podcasts like this, you got to get around those people that will support the vision. And, and then it's up to you to actually create that culture in your, your group and in your company to take this thing to the moon. So get yourself surrounded with those like-minded people that can 
can actually lock arms with you to grow this thing the way that you can then now step out. And back to what I did, I was working on my business, not in my business. Initially, I had to be in every single day. Every single day I was doing what I had to do. But at the moment that I could afford to hire an expert, I absolutely did that. Love it, man. That's awesome. Powerful, powerful advice to scale. So Riley, tell the people right now, where could people find more information about what you do, maybe with the seminars and maybe just to follow you in general, where can people connect with you at? You bet. So, well, first off, I will say this. If anybody wants to know more about, I, I, I've written a book called Intentional Influence. And this is this is valuable for certainly speaking one to many, but also just speaking one to one, right? In, being intentional with the words we use, the body language we use, uh, everything, using that social dynamic in in to our advantage for for whatever our the goal the goal that we actually have the purpose or the intent of why we're meeting with somebody. So if we can be intentional with that, we can influence a situation, right? Influence a buying decision. So I put this in a book, and if it's all right with you, brother, I'll, I'll provide a free download for them to get this. If they want to be amazing, want to purchase it, they got to go to Amazon. I don't even know what it's cost on there, but um, if they text the word influence to seven two seven four seven two three eight six zero. Again, just text the word influence to that number. Um, you'll get a, a a PDF download of that book so you can read it on your electronic device. Uh, and then from there, bro, rileymeek.com is uh, where they'll probably be able to find all of us. Uh, we're on social, all your major platforms, things like that, man. Love it. Thanks, man. I do appreciate you coming on. It's just been a uh, blessing to have you on the show, like always. So guys, listen, if you've enjoyed this conversation, go let Riley know. Like literally, I do not get anything about, I don't get any commissions, affiliates on the book or anything. Just go download the book. Go reach out to Riley on Instagram, Facebook. Let him know that you watch the show, listen to the show and let him know. But guys, this is what the, the Million Dollar Secrets show is all about. We're all about revealing the top strategies to help you guys take your business to the next level. Because there's not many times when you get to sit down and have lunch or have coffee with seven, eight, and even nine figure entrepreneurs. It doesn't happen often. But we know that if you wanna grow your business and take your life to the next level, you need to surround yourself with people who think differently and have those million dollar secrets. So that's why we're running the show, guys. Thank you for being here for this episode. Riley, again, thank you, my brother for being in the room with us. So blessed to have you in our presence. But guys, listen, if you found value in this, just share it with a friend. Hit the like button below if you're watching on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button because we have these coming out every single week, plus additional episodes on our channel that you don't wanna miss. And if you're listening, make sure to go ahead and subscribe as well and leave us a review. But guys, thank you for being here for this episode of the Million Dollar Secrets Show. We're so pumped that you're here. God bless you guys, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks, Riley. We'll see you soon.